Hello, everybody, and welcome to On Another Planet Euro 2024 uh, edition. I'm joined by former Wales international Robbie Savage and perhaps a future Scotland international, Fraser Fletcher. You <laughs> never, never know. Uh, let's get into England because, Robbie, last week you mentioned that, you know, the first a strong opposition that England face, they're going, they're going to struggle. Did you expect that to be Denmark? Well, I think people underestimated Denmark. I think um, they got to the semi-finals of the last Euros. A Euros, if you remember, when Portugal won it, I think they only won one game, you know, um, in terms of the 90 minutes or the 120 minutes. Am I right, phrase of that? Yeah, they drew, like, all the way, yeah, pretty much, yeah. didn't they? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so... Um, you know, England um, are getting criticism. Um, the top of the group with four points, only conceded one goal. And it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And mm. nobody remembers Portugal, um, with the exception of us just then, of of drawing lots and lots of games. They won it. So people will say Portugal won the Euros. And if England can go all the way, which I don't think they can, nobody will remember the draw against Denmark. Denmark got to the semi-finals of the last Euros. They scored the goal and then you could play the tape forward. They retreat, you know, they soak up pressure and they just lose their way. And it happens time after time after time. I think the biggest conundrum that Gareth Southgate has is you may, may have to sacrifice some of your best players for the balance of the team. I said it in the first podcast we did. I'd go 4-3-3 um, with Rice as the six. Bellingham and Ford as the two eights play them central. Um, I'd still play Harry Kane. The big question is, you know, they're talking about pressing. Um, when Ollie Watkins come in, he offers a threat and behind, and mm. he'll press a little better than Kane. Um, but I just think that I would say to Harry Kane, right, sixty minutes, go and press. Stay on the stay on the last line of defenders. Go and press. Everybody go because the number nine has to set the press. Um, and people are a few people. Question Harry Kane in this England side, which I think is bizarre. Um, he's only touching the box, he got the goal. So I think the big debate, once again, which we're having is, I wouldn't play with two sixes, especially in the final group game. I'd play with one six. I think Trent Alexander-Arnold, has that experiment work, work? I don't think it has, coming off in the both games. I think Phil Foden has to play central. I think the big problem is the left-back. Listen, Trippier is a very, very good player, but he's not... A, a natural left-sided player. With Shaw, the doubt's over Shaw. I can't understand why Southgate didn't take a natural left-footed left-back as part of the 26-man squad, considering this doubt's over Shaw. I would have taken Marcus Rashford because of the pace. I think a lot of people are saying we need runners. Uh, we, when I say we, I mean England, need runners in behind. Yeah. Rashford would have done that. Um, so for me, they're the big questions. Denmark deserve the draw, um, but it is positive. It's four points. They're going to qualify. They're probably going to win the group. The three big questions. Do you play with one six or two? If you play with two, who's next to Rice? Where does Phil Forden play? Phil Forden has to play. Harry Kane has to play. Mm -hmm. So they're the big questions. And it's, you know, Gareth Southgate has to figure out how he gets the right players in their right position. That's it. Play your play your players in the right positions. Sacrifice the ones that don't fit. Fraser, what did you make of? Because obviously Gareth Southgate is getting a lot of stick online from fans uh, as well. What did you make of of the performance? Where do you think things didn't when they didn't go quite right for England? I don't think the stick's unfair. I mean, I, I, I'm not English. And I'm, I, I, I was frustrated <laughs> watching such a talent. It feels like such a talented group of attacking players are kind of on a leash. The, the fact they've gone 1-0 up to Denmark and then sat back for me, you know, I, I think that's, that's the thing that kind of blows everyone's mind. I mean, that England team should be able to do what Germany did to Scotland, really, and just kick on at that point and, and win that game comfortably. I agree with Robbie. I think you should have Rice, Bellingham and Foden as a three in the midfield when they're defending their two sixes and an eight when they're attacking their six and two tens, whatever you want to do with it. But you should have that. I agree with that. You've got Adam Wharton and stuff there, Robbie, as well. I mean, Cole Palmer must be thinking, what do I have to do as well? He's not played a minute. This guy scored, what was it, 30, goal, 30 goals and assists all together last season for, for Chelsea. Could he have come on and made a difference? I think so, probably. But 
they were just so flat. And and I think I don't know if it's just the Southgate way, and it's a it's a system that's got England to a semi final to a final. So it's hard to criticise it because as Robbie said, if they win it, nobody's going to care that they drew this game. That that is a fact. But I think the worry is if England play like they did yesterday against a Germany, because if England finish second in the group, they could get Germany in the round of sixteen. I mean that that would be that would be a tough tie looking at how they played yesterday. Um, so you know that's the concern I think for everyone is that and I, and I'm I'll, I'll sorry just I'll, I'm rambling on but I listened to Gary Neville talk about the looking at the team and he said there's something about this team that makes me think they could go early they could go out early even though there's all this hype about them winning it and being favourites they could go out early and I think if England don't pick it up they they will struggle against a better, better side but game week two you know I'm sure that I'm sure they'll still go through the group I'm sure they'll still top the group. Um, but yeah, I think they just need a bit more license to have a bit more fun up front. Um, they're a bit too restrained for me. Massive game for England on, on Tuesday against Slovenia. But speaking of massive games, what about Scotland against oh. Hungary uh, coming up on uh, Saturday? Uh, sorry, on Sunday uh, in Stuttgart. Fraser, you know, let's go back to you. What did you make of that draw against Switzerland? And how confident are you that uh, Scotland can get something away against uh, Hungary? Very, very confident. Like I, I, this is why I was so angry last week, because what you've seen um, in our last game was the aggression, going for the ball, the energy, the pressing, the tempo that should have been there against Germany. Because it wasn't about losing to Germany, I was saying to Robbie last week, it was the manner in which we did it. Billy Gilmer, fantastic, makes such a difference. He's just got that ability, the, the goal on the uh, counter-attack, that little touch and pass to move it, frees them up to go and run. Simple little things like that. Uh, I thought everyone played well. Angus Gunn, who I was very critical of, had a fantastic game. Had a fantastic game. So he made me eat humble pie and eat my words. And that, that's, that's, that's great. I, I want him to do that because it means we're doing well. Um, so I was really, really happy. Still think we've got a problem at right back. Uh, I think Andy Ralston struggled. Um, but we also have no Aaron Hickey. He's injured from Brentford. We've got no uh, Nathan Patterson. He's injured from Everton What would you well. do, Fraze? What, what would you do? Would you, would you go to a back three? Forrest, um, James Forrest is a right wing back, possibly. What would you do? Yeah, I think it's worth trying it, Robbie, to be honest. I think Ralston's really struggled. I mean, even the, even the boy um, in the last game, he had him on toast really a lot of the time. So I, I, I think it's also not his fault. He's not really played for Scotland, Robbie. And now he's been chucked in at the Euros. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, that's tough as well. So I think the, the Forrest uh, experiment's worth trying, but it would be a huge experiment. It, is, it would be a huge experiment. He's an what, attacking winger, mate. He's not a defender. So it's going to cost you at the other end. Do you know what I mean? Potentially. So but you've I got still to win the game. We've got to win the game. I think we do. I think Scotland do. What would your team be then, Fred? Uh, we're going to have Angus Gunn, Grant Hanley. Uh, the defence doesn't need to, I don't think you can change the defence. Back I think, four. Would you go back four or back three? Uh, three. Three okay. wing backs and drops got into it. a five. What's your team? Uh, um, I'll go Cooper. Hanley, um, Hendry. I'd go Forrest. I'd try the Forrest thing if it's a wing back. Um, Robertson, obviously, Rob was going to be there. Um, and then I'm going the four. He does a box four in midfield, which you would have seen. So I'm going to have McGinn. I'm going to have Gilmer's got to play. Gilmer has to play every single game for Scotland. McTominay's playing. And I'm playing Christie um, as well. And then, obviously, I would, I would put Lauren Shankland up front. I still say this. I think there's this argument that he doesn't have the legs of Shea Adams. He doesn't put as much energy in and run. But what I will say is he only needs one chance. Lawrence Shanklin needs one chance. He's a guy that scored 30 plus goals last season. He knows where the back of the net is. And I think what's most important for Scotland is taking that chance when it comes. Yeah. Um, and I think he does run and chase because he came on in, in the game late on and he was showing that energy. So uh, Lawrence Shanklin would start for me over Shea Adams. But I mean, it's not much changes, but I think those are the two major changes I would make. Um, and it's unfair in Cal McGregor not getting in because he's actually been all right, the Celtic captain for Scotland. But we're good enough. Uh, we will get through. Do you leave the Celtic no... captain out? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's a big call. Well, listen, I'm going to get stuck and they'll say us because he supports Rangers and all that, and uh, they will. But I'm telling you, every time Cal McGregor plays for Celtic in the SPL, he's fantastic. Every time he plays against for Celtic in the Champions League or at a higher level, Celtic fans say themselves constantly he disappears and he struggles. And that's because 
perhaps that's just that level up. I don't know. I'm being polite in saying that, but I just think that there's a Christie is better who's played at Bournemouth and been good at Bournemouth in the Premier League. But I understand why he likes to play McGregor because he feels like he offers him that defensive security. But I think John McGinn does a lot of that hard work anyway in there. I think Billy Gilmore's actually good defensively and is just great to transition into attack with. So that he wouldn't be in for me. He doesn't get in against those four. Uh, of McGinn, McTominay. It's all the M's in it. McGinn, McTominay, uh, Gilmer and Christie. I think that's a better option uh, for Oof. me. Scott if Scotland were to uh, obviously sorry, progress sorry. out of the group stage, Robbie, how massive of an achievement would that be? Considering you know, it's not an easy group of Switzerland, Hungary and, and, uh, and Germany. How big of an achievement would that be to progress out of that group? I think that's the best they could have hoped for. I think I, I said in my predictions the last 16, I think they've got the potential to do that. Um, it looks like they'll probably, you know, if they win the game, Frazier, can they, they, can they finish second or will it be third? What if Switzerland on four points? Switzerland need to lose by Switzerland need to lose by a good swing of goals, Robbie. So, so you're probably think, going to be third. Yeah, so yeah. If they get through, what you know they're going to play a, a top team, aren't they? Yeah. Well, that's so, all right. Where they, I mean, Scotland haven't got through, so that's history making. You know, that's what I'm saying. Through, so that but, it would yeah. be it would be a good tournament. Yeah, if they got to the last sixteen, Seb, I believe it would be success. I mean, Steve Clark said himself after the game, we're still on for our target. Their target was to be have the opportunity of getting four points because that's really kind of seen as the amount you need and yeah. having the opportunity to be a best third place team. And, and that, that's, that's where we're at. So we know where we're at, but um, we'll take it, man. And I think we'll win. I think it'll be 2-0 to Scotland. Oof. Huge game coming up uh, for Scotland, obviously, against Hungary. Uh, I just want to turn your quick attention, Robbie, to Portugal because you mentioned they were your dark uh, horses at the last, uh, last episode. We saw them in action against the Czech Republic, a uh, tough side as well, the Czechs. Uh, a narrow victory, late goal uh, to seal the win. Are they still your dark horses in your opinion or has somebody else in the tournament swayed your mind a little bit? No, I think Portugal, I think you look at the quality of the individual, look at you know um, how they utilise the bench. I think you know the late goal, uh, you, you can't help but you know, look in awe of the quality they have individually. And if, mm. you know, if they can do that collectively, then they've got a great chance. Listen, they've showed that they kept going, they kept going, they kept probing, they got the winning goal. And, you know, it's it's a it's a real positive start for them. So, again, yeah. As a collective, they went brilliant, but individual talent and magic, you know, at times will pull them out of it. And that's the difference. You know, if they're not playing well, they've got so many players on the pitch who can make a difference just by that bit of individual brilliance. Fraser, has anybody, uh, has anybody caught your attention so far in this tournament? Turkey. I think yeah. Turkey are brilliant. Turkey are a great side, really good side. They had a really, really strong qualification. They've got some great players. Arda Guler is an unbelievable talent. He's an unbelievable talent at Real Madrid. That strike, by the way, Usually from that angle, you see them kind of bend the inside foot. He's absolutely rattled that from that angle. It was amazing. Love Turkey. I think they're great. I think they'll go through uh, comfortably and be a real trouble. I think they could be the side that become that team in the tournament that everyone goes, oh, where have they come from almost? Um, I agree with Robbie. Portugal squad's just absolutely ridiculous. Um, and, you know, when they've got Ronaldo on the pitch and he's not doing it, they'll bring Jota on. You know, they've got Rafael Leo who can pull something out of the bag. Bruno Fernandes, all these players are just like, this is ridiculous. France, Netherlands tonight. I think that's mm -hmm. a that's a good, good game. I really like Holland's squad. I think it's really good and balanced, but I don't know if they're there yet. I think they've got players that are maybe a tournament or two away from, from being there. So that could be a good one. Potential banana skin for France tonight. Could you see France dropping points, Robbie, against Holland? I mean, no, fancy I, I don't. I know you can, can you? <laughs> but you didn't see England dropping points yesterday. And here we are, Robbie. Here we are. You forgot to mention Paul Austria, Fraser. I, I don't know why, I don't know why you're doing that to me. That's a massive game. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but Portugal-Turkey should be an absolute banger on Saturday. There's some yeah. big games, obviously, for England and Scotland. But for now, Robbie and Fraser, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you, everyone, who tuned in. And we'll see you in the next episode.